Alex Ross here at the Lakeside with Mr. Inside the WDF, Andrew Sinclair. Thanks for joining me here at the Lakeside. You're at the Home of the World Dance. It's a pleasure. It's great to be back here. You can feel the excitement building. Tournament starting today and... I don't know, it, it feels like it's been a long time in the making and they wanted to run the World Masters and then they had to put it back and then they wanted to run the World and to put it back and then the Masters got put back and then this originally got put back as well so to actually finally be here, it's happening, we've seen the TV crew setting up, we've been in the media room, all of it, it's ready to go, I can't wait, you know the players can't either so buzzing. I mean for you as well, you're a big follower of the WDF, I mean yesterday must have been like Christmas Eve as you say, you know, a Long wait, but we finally got here. I mean, how excited are you just to see this tournament go away finally today? Massive. You know, I wouldn't have followed it and, and reported on it and covered it as extensively as I have if I didn't want them to succeed and do well. So, yeah, this is a massive moment. I'm really excited and pleasure to go on the players' walk yesterday. And you could see the new players, the debutants. You could see the excitement in their faces. Like, and I've seen this on TV. I've seen people from my country play on this stage before, and I'm going to be able to do it. Or even someone like you know. Francesco Roschini from Italy he's the first Italian to ever play in the world you know see him there he was just sort of a bit like you know like trying to take it all in and everything so yeah I mean it's massive for the players and my hope is just the tournament runs smoothly you know and they're able to leverage the great stories that are going to take place in this tournament into social content into stories and it's going to be tangible proof that they can run events that they're not the same as the PDO and that they are going to be the future of this side of the game so they can do it here that adds weight to the World Masters if they can then do the World Masters that adds weight to Lakeside next year and so on so actually running it is important for them and obviously for me because I want to keep covering it so. definitely and we're in the, the players room it's an extended field for the men's and the women's event a lot of new faces new names that we've not seen on TV before but one name who's opening up the show this afternoon on day one a player that's one of your favourites Martin Adams how much are you looking forward to seeing him on that stage that walk on and back where he's won those three world titles he's a bit emotional really I think <laughs> he's my favourite player he's the reason I love this sport and I mean there was no other way you could start the tournament was there and the thing is he's in a really good game as well you know Jared Cole young up and coming lad got bags of talent this is the first opportunity like this for him and he's going up against there with a man who's got more experience and played more times here than anybody else so it, it's quite a weird one it's also best of three so it could easily go either way you know it's basically best of 11 which Jared's played you know he's played close to that on the development tour all that kind of stuff so you know it could go either way and I think that will push Wolfie to produce his best and if he plays like he did at the World Seniors a couple of months ago there's no reason why he can go all the way and make it four world titles and then he take Wayne Warren's record as the oldest world champion in history so yeah I can't wait well, we should touch on your picks as well you were kind enough to give them to us earlier in the week you've gone with Martin Adams to beat Cameron Menzies in the final how confident are you that you're going to see Martin lift that trophy a week tomorrow? Not confident at all because I found it really hard to pick a winner because it's like you know there were some people who qualified through performances in 2020 which were two years ago there were some people who qualified through the back end of last year but their forms tailed off this year you know there were people I would have picked in January to win it but I won't pick now so yeah I'm not confident at all Wolfie could lose today to Jared and I've got egg on my face as I said in a preview you guys you know he could lose to Anthony Allen Anthony Allen's a very capable player easy to lose that game he's got you know if he comes through that he's probably got to play Brian or man or whatever so it's not going to be easy it's not be easy games anywhere and I think yeah there's going to be a lot of new faces in the men's draw but there's a lot of very capable players in that draw as well and anyone you know I think anyone of sort of 12 14 names could probably win it we'll have to wait and see but yeah that's what that's what my mind's saying it wants that's what the heart's saying yeah. it wants but whether that's what actually happens I have no idea what about the ladies draw there's a few of the big names not here for other reasons we don't know but we have got a lot of quality in that field a lot of people looking at Makuru Suzuki is she going to complete the hat trick Bo Greaves who's come back into the form how do you see this ladies tournament playing out well I mean I touched on it just now like, if you'd asked me to predict the ladies for championship in January mm. what I would have said is totally different to what I'm saying now you know last year Dita Hedman won six titles in three months yeah. playing as well as she had in ages and I was like she's finally going to do it because Makuru hadn't had the steel tip match practice she was playing soft tip out in Japan not a lot of that either Bo was really crippled with the I saw it first hand at Celsius. it was bad like, really really bad so 
I would have thought she's not got a chance. Eileen de Graaf, gone back to work as a nurse in the Netherlands, not playing as much as she used to. She didn't do the Lazy Series last year because of the COVID regs and all that kind of stuff. So it's like, well, you know, you couldn't really see an outcome. It wasn't Dita winning. Um, but Dita's had a shoulder problem in recent months, so now it's like it's going to be tough for her to win. And now the top half of the draw looks very, very scary indeed. You know, Makuru Suzuki played really well in the Live League last week, 90 80 averages. Play Laura Turner, who's capable of that standard. That's a tough first round game for either of them. And then you're looking at quarter finals for Makuru, she's probably going to have to play butt. And we saw what Bo did in the Isle of Man 105 average off stream. And then a 94 and a 99 won three titles, the first 90 plus county average of the, the women's season. And it's like, well, yeah, she's hit top form again. And it's like, I don't think anybody in the field can live with that standard if she plays that well. Now, being on that stage with the pressure, are the yips going to come back? You don't know. All of those things, there's a lot of storylines, but for me, that Bo Makuru projected what a final. The winner of that, I think, for me, goes to the semis of all the confidence in the world. You, you, I couldn't see him not winning. So I either think Makuru's going to win it three times on the trot, or Bo's going to become the youngest world champion in history, either of which is a phenomenal story. So, yeah. And then the bottom half of the draw, the other finalist, the bottom half of the draw is wide open. A lot of new players, a lot of players who aren't in great form or whatever. So it's like, well, the bottom of the draw is a minefield. You'd think, based on previous experience and the quality she's shown, Kirsty Hutchins would probably be the favourite to, to make the final. I mean, Collins has been to the final once. Rihanna Sullivan's been to the final twice. They're capable players, don't they? And Kazil's a good player as well. So... I don't know. But for me, you can't look past Bo and McCurry, really. I don't think there's many people that know the WDF, the players, more than you. You've interviewed a lot of them. For our listeners that maybe don't know some of the players that aren't involved, especially this weekend, give us some names that you're looking forward to seeing on that stage. I know Rory Hansen's one that's going to jump off the page straight away. Team Rory Hansen? Yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, obviously, looking forward to seeing Rory. He's you know one of the most lovely guys. You've seen that yourself. Yeah, He's yeah. just a lovely, humble bloke. And he's just really nice. He's just like a very friendly job. Canadian and I've got an awful lot of time for him. Looking forward to seeing Justin Thompson, he's a good laugh. Wasn't the kindest when we were playing our game yesterday, but I'll forgive Tomo for that. Um, I mean, I said this in the preview with you guys, the guy to watch for me is Lajlo Kadar from Romania. Now, he is someone that people won't know. He first came on the radar for me, the Romanian Open final in 2020 when he played Nick Kenny, because the Romanian fans were quite leery in that final. Um, Nick had won his tour card by this point, and then went over there for his final WF event, won it, and uh, got quite leery and jumped off the stage when he won and gave it the big one. So that was when I first saw Kadar. But then last year he really stepped it up and he won the Apperton Open, played really well, and then earlier this year came in 4 2 down to beat Scott Marsh to win the Slovak Open. So he's obviously in good form and beating good quality players. Um, he's an older guy too, so I don't know that he's going to be phased by nerves or debut or whatever. You know, he's experienced, he's played darts for a long time. And the other thing to watch with him is these bonkers setup shots. You know, I, I think I put it in the article, I said it on the podcast, you know, he, he, let, he was one, one three, two left in the leg once. I remember he threw one, one, two, four to leave himself eight. And I was just like, that is a proper alpha move. <laughs> and that's the sort of thing I think people will enjoy watching as well. He's like the Jose D'Souza there. People are a little bit different, a little bit unconventional, are fun to watch. And I could easily see him winning his first round game and then got to play Richard Einstein, which could be a super high quality game, but it also is one that Laszlo could win. So yeah, he's, he's one to watch. Who else? Is there anyone else I can think of? Um, Jim McEwen will be the other one. So obviously I know Jim quite well, get on with Jim really well. Um, for him, this is a massive moment because he's one of his playing late side all the time he's been playing darts. He only started playing darts seriously about 10 years ago. Got into the Scotland team quite late. I think he got into the Scotland team for the first time when he was 51, something like that. So for him to get here and make his debut here, I know is a massively emotional moment for him. He's got a reason to be okay, first round draw against Landon Gardner. 
and you see the way he's played in the live league you know you've seen the way he's played he won a WF title last year he's played on almost all of the Pro Tours last year he sees it he knows what he's doing and there's no reason why he can't go all the way and win it quickly run through our picks then come on to our game last night I'll whisper it quietly because he's standing behind you but you've gone for Martin Adams to win you've also gone for Bo Greaves to win the ladies we'll go through Matthew Keenan on our show he's gone with uh, Mike Warburton to win Bo Greaves to win the ladies our producer Hannah she's gone with the top seed Brian Roman and Bo Greaves Burton he's gone outfield Dave Prince to win the men's and McCurry Suzuki to win the ladies I'm going with Cameron Menzies for my tip for the men's I did go for McCurry Suzuki for the ladies but I've crossed it out backing Kirsty Hutchinson I think she's great value in that bottom half and if she gets to the final she could go all the way so that's my one but let's talk about the proper darts last night and first off a shout out to Gareth Porter he was bang on 10.30 was going to be the finish time for the game and that is roughly when about to finish but talk us through it it was a, it was a battle up there on the uh, in the Lakeside Hotel bar but we, we got there in the end yeah I mean let's set the scene the Peninsula bar it was quite busy quite rowdy got Martin Adams propped up on the bar a bit bemused at the standard that's going on on board one um, we, had, we had to change boards as well the game took that long. yeah we did indeed we had a long break after set two I went off gossiping and then I came back and uh, Kevin Luke had taken board one it was like oh you have to shuffle the board too um, it's like on the challenge door when they open that extra board it's good some board really slow yeah. um, but I mean yeah I mean first set I started really well in the first leg I was miles ahead and then I bust 47 <laughs> in a very bizarre way um, and then like, you came back into the leg took out 28 which you seem to be left on an innumerable amount of time <laughs> yeah. in that game um, yeah and I think, I think that the first leg sort of put me off a bit and then uh, yeah I sort of fell away you won the first set second set was a bit of a brawler using the Icelandic rules where you go for the bull after the Five. Yeah, that happened a few times. I think every leg in that set went to the ball. <laughs> and uh, the, the legs where I wasn't throw, you know, where I didn't have the throw, I won because I used yours as a marker. Yeah, yeah. And uh, the legs where I went first, I shanked it massively, you know, in a different postcode, so it was a lot easier for you. So, yeah, I think the second set was a decider, really, because if I'd won that through the ball, other means, it would have been 1 1. You know, that might have affected you a little bit, but I think I was crushed. And then you opened the third set with a 22 dot leg. Yeah, that was I a massive 147. Yeah. Triple 20, shanked into the triple nine, yeah. back into the triple 20. Uh, yeah, it was a. I think that broke me. I think the last two legs of that game were a bit of a slog. Uh, but yeah, first World Pop, well, first World Podcast Darts Championships, and you were the winner, my friend. So congratulations to you. But I'll be coming back for it next year. I look forward to that. Well, as I said to Burton, I had a game with Matthew at Mine Ed and a game with you at Lakeside. And Burton said, if you lose both of them, you're out. So there's a lot of pressure on me last night. So thankful to win. But no, it was a great pleasure to share the opportunity with the other game. And the longest game we're going to see this weekend, best of five sets. All the games this weekend are going to be the best of three sets. But Andrew, appreciate your time, appreciate you coming so far, and enjoy the dance. Thank you very much. I'm glad you've forgiven me for the uh, Scotty Dog tactics during the game as well. <laughs> but uh, always a pleasure. Look forward to the dance. Delighted to be joined by one of the busiest men in the world of darts right now, Chris Murphy. How are you doing? Yeah, good to be here. Good to see you first to first for once. It definitely is, mate. And um, yeah, I think there's a bit of competition between yourself. Dan Dawson, Paul Nicholson, Mark Webster, busiest commentator in the game. Who do you think's got it at the moment? Uh, it's got to be Mark Webster, hasn't it? He's managed to weasel his way into every kind of tournament. I think he's even appearing at the Live League as well next week behind the mic. So, yeah, I think Mark Webster gets that one. And rightly so, a very good commentator. And yesterday you were at the Pro Tour. What a final that was. Yeah, I missed, and Andrew Gildon. I missed the final to us driving down here. And I, I, I'm going to put my cards on the table here and admit, I my semi-final finished first which Danny Hansen won and Noppet Gilding was still playing and I kind of set off assuming that Danny Noppet was going to win the tournament and then I stopped at the services and wow Gilding and Janssen in the final and Janssen wins um, it just goes to show the strength and depth in the PDC right now Dan and I in commentary at one point were talking about potential winners and we said we could probably list 50 people who we thought could win a tournament I'm not sure Danny Janssen would have been in that 50 so yeah real incredible story well, let's get on to you and to me saw you on TV in the commentary box for the World Seniors what was that like and working with John Gwynn as well yeah really um, I think it was a really good place for me to make my TV debut here at Lakes I was meant to be my TV debut back in January the way it's worked out um, because of the seniors obviously all the players are, there's plenty to, to know about them
them and I knew something about all the players that are here have had to do a lot of prep I think I would have been a little more nervous had I not done that first but yeah going to a commentator for talk sport the Alexandra Palace and then Circus Tavern for the seniors and now here I'm at Lakeside for the WBF World Championship so it's been a little kind of road show for me so far this year of, of iconic venues and also the Barnsley Metrodome yesterday as well <laughs> You're ticking off all the big ones as you say you've done Ali Pali for talk sport you've done the Circus Tavern now you're doing the Lakeside as well Yeah it's really special um, I'm really excited about this I think yeah the seniors was um, a different kind of thing I think it turned into a serious tournament but it was about nostalgia and you know a real feel good thing um, this is kind of an unknown even though it's here at the Lakeside returning to the home of World Darts um, it's, a, it's a very different kind of feeling going in the seniors but equally exciting um, and I just can't wait to get my teeth into it really You should touch on some of your picks as well you were kind enough to send them to us earlier in the week you went with James Richardson to beat Mike Ward and you stick him out or have you changed your mind? I've looked at the draw so many times and I've come out with different winners every single time I've looked at it um, now um, I don't know why I picked James Richardson to get to the final but uh, I, I suppose I have to stick with it I, I, I do keep coming back to Mike Warburton actually I do think that he's a very very good player and he's got a throw that I think will sustain itself over the longer format that he'll be playing in as the tournament progresses so I do think that he is a good tip for the final I think that James Richardson probably a little bit left field but there are so many players that can turn it on I think he's one of those who set play might suit him because he can reel off three legs really quickly and, and if he does that then yeah he could go deep still um, but I might look silly in a couple of days time you look silly with Matthew he's with Mike Warburton as well what about the, the ladies draw great to see this event back you have gone with a, a popular choice of Kuro Suzuki soon enough from her in the live league this week to suggest she's going to do it yeah I think so I think so I mean she won the last women's series event of last year have, having struggled in that really but until then um, and I think that was a little bit of a sign she beat Lisa Ashton in the final um, Ashton and Fallon Cherick have obviously been playing the best darts of, of any ladies two players who aren't in the tournament so I think by default for me it goes to Makuru um, but I mean everyone would like to see Dita Hedman win finally win the title here at the Lakeside but I, I think that the, the big danger is a, another woman we've seen do really well here at the Lakeside and really well on the women's series uh, and that's Rihanna O'Sullivan I think she She's uh, the, the kind of dark horse for the title. Definitely. And lastly, it's going to be a busy opening weekend. 24 games, all first round games. Wolf is the big name this afternoon. But what are you most looking for this weekend? Yeah, I think when when you asked me for the for the article, I think everyone seems to be looking forward to the first match of most. I think it's quite clever to put it on first. Really, it's good scheduling, get the party started with the match that most people are interested in, um, and I think that should set the tone for a good tournament. But I think there are some other really tasty games. Um, I've got the match with James Richardson and is it Sebastian Steyer yeah. uh, that he's playing at, I've got that on commentary um, again even though I predicted Richardson to maybe win the tournament it's a game that could go either way I think some of the ladies games are particularly the top half of the draw is really really brutal just, if you're going to get through that half of the draw you've got big name after big name after big name um, so yeah really just looking forward to getting the tournament started and there are other stories like the second match today which will be my first Johnny Haynes and John Scott, two players have waited an awful long time to play on the Lakeside stage. Just speaking to John Scott, he said he, he's using a new set of darts the last year or so. He'd used the same set for 40 years before that. Um, and this is how long you know these people have been building towards this dream. So I think you know there are people that will knock the tournament, that, that happens. But I think actually when you look around, all the players here, um, it still means something to them. It's still their darting dream to get the Lakeside stage. And I don't think anyone should devalue the tournament for them I think you know don't take it away from them and I'm excited to be here and I don't know about your experts certainly starting to feel the buzz about the place yeah it's getting exciting I'm looking forward to it have a good run in the commentary box for your time here thanks very much for joining us pleasure thanks for having me Gary Cole Speaking after probably the biggest win of your career so far, would you say beating Martin Adams oh, on that Lakeside stage? Yes, yeah, certainly up there. Yeah, no, I can't, I can't off the top of my head think of a bigger occasion. So yeah, I'm going to say yes. Yeah. Let's bring it back. You played the qualifiers here to get into the, the field. Talk us through that day because I think did you play Adam Smith Neil that day? You had a, a tough draw to begin. Yeah, I mean my very first game of the day was against Adam Smith Neil and by any means I mean he's a fantastic player that was not an easy run and the whole day it was filled with incredible talent but I had to play well to get through so yeah to come over to Lakeside and also do myself a bit of justice so I'm 
I'm really happy, really happy. When the, the draw came out, you got one of the, the biggest names in the field, Martin Adams. That was back in December, the tournament got pushed back a little bit. What's the wait been like to get up on that stage? Um, it's been a bit of both. I mean, I didn't mind the fact that it was delayed. Obviously, at the time I did, because I was hoping to win a professional tour card. But when that didn't happen, it was a case of it gave me a couple of months to prepare, because obviously after Q school, you want a couple of weeks to just sort of sit your head back, you know, and just sort of relax, get yourself together again and recompose. And it gave me that opportunity to do so. So I'm really happy with that. Last time we spoke was just after you won that MAD title in front of a small crowd, and we were saying that's one of the first times you've played in front of a crowd. Today, though, Lakeside, one of the biggest crowds they're going to get for the tournament. That must have been something special. Yeah, that, that atmosphere today was fantastic. I mean, I had all my friends and family there. I'm sure Martin would have as well. And it was it was outrageous. Like, the amount of people, the amount of noise, everything you did, it echoed around the room, you know. It was fantastic. To have your family, friends come down to support you, what's that like? when you're up there and you're seeing them backing you as well. I mean, it just shows the belief they have in me. I mean, obviously, I like to back myself and believe that I'm going to be as good as what my darts say I am. But in the same sense, you know, it sh shows that it's not just me thinking it myself. It means everyone believes it. And that, that to me means a lot. I mean, it's almost like a bit of reassurance. And when you're struggling and when you're not playing your best, you can look out into the crowd, you see your family and your friends, and it gives you that extra drive to do well. Definitely. The first round is such a short format, best of three sets, but you can pick out a few key moments in that game. One I wanted to pick out was the, the 85, treble 15, you went low on the tops, you composed yourself, and then you hit the double 10. You, you must have took a lot from that to do that in that moment. Yeah, I mean, in the whole match, I was sitting there going, every time he did something that sort of would have stood out, I like to think I bounced back really well. And every time he made me feel like at any point I wasn't on the front foot, I in myself recomposed myself and tried to get myself back there and I felt like I can I controlled my my part of the game really well and I was really happy with that. Yeah, the format goes up a little bit best of five sets you play one of the seats next. A lot of people looking at this tournament saying it's wide open. You must be one of those players thinking now you took out my ladder so I've got fancy chances. Uh, of course. I mean I know how well I'm playing and I know that there's some really good darts inside me right now and I'm hoping it will conduct throughout the whole tournament. If I play as I can, it takes a really good player to beat me. So I'm hoping that will show and it will come through on my next couple of games. Fingers crossed it all goes well. Well, Jared, well done today. Thank you very much. Best of luck for the next round. Cheers, mate. Thank you. Here we are back at Lakeside day two with the asset Paul Nicholson. Great to have you back on the show, Paul. How are you doing? Yes, I'm very well, very well. Thanks for having me. And what a day we had yesterday, the first day of the WDF World Championship, 12 games. I said just before we started, I'm not going to test you on all the results, but how did you find it yesterday? A, a long day, busy day, but plenty to, to look back on. Yeah, I think there was there was definitely some shine on the apple yesterday. You look at what happened in the first game, it was a big shame that Wolfie left us so early, but the smile of Jared Cole was some Something that we were talking about for the rest of the day. He's already in the building today, so you look at him and that victory meant a lot to him. And I think there was a lot of people talking about changing of the guard, but I'm not going to go that far yet. I think there's been a lot of people trying to vie for Wolfie's crown as the King of Lakeside for quite some time, but we haven't seen the last of the Wolf. So, well, the one who stole the show yesterday, Jim McEwen, with that 101 average. I was looking back, that's the highest average in a world championship at Lakeside since 2004. That's a, a big marker he's put down in the first round. Huge. It's, it's always good when you start the first set with 107. Yeah. You know, you complete three legs and 42 darts. But Jim McEwen putting in these kind of performances is not a surprise. Yeah. On debut at the Lakeside, maybe it is a little bit, but... I think he walks away from that performance feeling that the world is oyster because you don't win the British Classic, you don't win live league darts and you don't go to pro to action in the PDC and become a threat by being a bad player. He has got great ability and a superb temperament on the stage, not surprised by that performance one bit. As we touched on Friday, there's so many players this weekend making their world championship debut. One of them, who I caught the eye of me yesterday, it was Romania's Laszlo Kadar. This is his debut, first Romanian to win a match, and that the finishing in that second half of the game was what stood out for me. Yeah, 
I, I think Laszlo, when you look at some of his results over the last couple of years, he's someone we have to take note of. He's got a couple of citizenships from Romania and Hungary, so he had his choice of who to represent. He chose Romania, he was doing it proudly. He had a bad first set, but the way he was able to bounce back, get a little bit of fortune against a very dangerous opponent in Andreas, I thought he did brilliantly well. And he now has another opportunity to go there and see how strong he can be. But you look at his win in Serbia in Appleton a couple of years ago, and you look at what he's done recently as well, this has been coming. And maybe he's one of those players who can take that area of Europe just that one step further. If you want to watch him, I know you put on Twitter before the tournament, the ladies' draw is what you were really excited about. The champ, I've already seen her in the building, Makuru Suzuki. How much are you looking forward to seeing her on that lakeside stage today? Well, some of your people at the Weekly Darts cast uh, are big super fans yes. of yes. Makuru Suzuki. I always have been yeah. since I met her in Hong Kong a few years ago. She's an extraordinary player. And I think when she comes here, she'll feel invincible. But the women's draw really is what I'm looking forward to this week. I, I look at the open nature of it, the, the lack of Sherrick, the lack of Ashton, the lack of Gulliver, and you know, the lack of Anastasia as well. We can't forget about Anna. You know, they're some of the greatest players of all time, and none of them are here. So that, what an opportunity for somebody to lift that trophy for the very first time. But is it going to be finally Dieter Hedman to do it, or is there going to be some Somebody's time to lift it somebody new I don't know but I'm just really intrigued to see who does it and it's going to take a great performance to take that trophy away from the Japanese ace and away from the WDF I know you're a busy man you wanted to touch on the, the JDC side of things that you're involved in and the coaching talk to us about what's going on there yeah well during lockdown speaking to Darren Barson and Steve Brown we we had this vision of where things go from here too often in uh, the, in darts for people when they're growing up the, the kind of advice that they need it comes at the end of a corner bar and that advice is usually wrong it's uh, it's just the way it's been for the last 40 or 50 years even longer than that so when you look at sports like golf which have gone through a massive transformation from the 70s to the late 90s so you think about you know where John Daly was back in 1991 you know cigarette in mouth you know 15 dive cooks on the on the golf course or something stronger when he got off it you know the, the days of Fuzzy Zeller and Lanny Watkins you know propping up the bar when they finished 18 holes you look at what darts was in the 70s and 80s and where it is going now we are inching towards the sort of Tiger Woods element of darts now people who are keeping fitter you look at Gerriman Price you look at some of the other people coming through they look a, a lot fitter they look ready for these long days but coaching somewhat sneered at over the last 10 years if you were getting coached in darts they would say what do you need coaching for in darts uh, what an, a ridiculous statement <laughs> so during lockdown uh, I was at the forefront of a, a project which Rod Harrington was at Alan Warren a little from the PDPA and we started talking about a genuine programme where people could be darts coaches so when we were locked down and we weren't able to do much uh, we went through a pilot programme with Chichester College to see whether this programme was viable I came through the course I've passed it as has somebody else within the ADC system and that is now going to be rolled out to the greater public in the United Kingdom and eventually worldwide it's going to be a three step system where you can get a fundamental coaching qualification which is government government actually you know certificate uh, get a government certificate for it and after that you can get an immediate and then pro level coaching qualifications everything's been written everything will be rolled out and if you want to be a darts coach the opportunity is there but I can say hand on heart right now that I was the first person to, to pass the course uh, so it means that when I do my coaching with clients now I can say I'm a qualified darts coach which is a big thing for me and for the sport well, I might have to sign you up after how badly I played the other day but you mentioned the ADC I know you're a big part of the MAD launch that's obviously now changed to the ADC you're obviously still a, a part of the ADC what did you make of the whole transition those months with MAD switching to, to ADC I think it's more of a brand thing more than anything else I think the, the, the crux of what MAD wanted to do is, is, is very much the crux of what, what the ADC wanted to do but I think the whole mad thing didn't sit well with some people and, and branding is everything in the 21st century so I think that was ultimately you know what the, the big decision was about but what Scott Hunt and, and Steve Brown have done has been great it's giving 
another avenue for the amateur game to allow people to you know achieve something and ultimately when you look at something like Lakeside it's still in the amateur game so everything ties in towards each other I don't think we're all rivals in the amateur game I think we're all looking for the same goal to give everybody a home to play so I really look forward to see what, seeing what happens over the next couple of years to see where where things go Just touching on your playing side of things I watched your interview with the PDC it was a great watch and you said you're going to have one more go at Q School 2023 have you mapped out the plan for the rest of this year playing wise what are you going to play to get yourself ready for Q School Not yet uh, I, I sit here in early April looking at my calendar for the next two months thinking why do I even have a house <laughs> so you know I'm going to Austria I'm going to Germany a couple of times I'm going to the Netherlands you know I've got Lakeside to complete first there's, you know there's a Scotland exhibition in there which I'm really looking forward to I haven't been to Scotland in nearly three years so it, I look at the immediate stuff that I've got in the calendar and that's you know going to keep me busy but when we get to around about the time where the World Cup is on in Frankfurt I'm not working that for Sky so uh, I can have a little bit of break then and then I can speak to the guys at the live league and say can you stick me in for these weeks I'd like to play three or four times uh, in the weekly phases before the end of the year and then maybe cherry pick a few tournaments that I can go to and make myself uncomfortable for the day and see where I stand before we go to Q School in January the, the preparation for that is going to be key uh, from two angles one from the practice and the competition standard secondly the schedule that I have for myself before Q School has always been really difficult for me to balance it because I love working for Talk Sport I'm going to be working with them for the Worlds again at Ali Pali I'm not going to change that for anything it's my favourite job of the year maybe with the exception of going to Blackpool with Talk Sport but I think if I get that right and I can have that little gap between the end of the Worlds and Q School and just give myself some energy and give myself a few days of practice and there's no reason why I can't do it I wish you the best for that and lastly we can't let you go without getting some picks mm. the last time we had you on was your picks for the 2020 BDO I don't know if you remember who you went for for that Bo Groves for the ladies I did and then you went with the winner of Hogan Williams for the men so you yep. went too far off yep what do you fancy for, for this year somebody said to me yesterday and after I got somebody in serious trouble for reading a tweet uh, uh, or, a, or a text message on commentary last night which I won't do again uh, somebody said to me if Bo Greaves turns up this week she wins it and I find that very hard to go against because the way she's performed in certain tournaments in the last few months she's head and shoulders above anybody but uh, Mrs Suzuki was not there and she she is a bit of a difference maker. I'm going to go for the Suzuki three peat. I think uh, she's held onto that trophy and she's got some almost cemented fingerprints on it now. I think I think she'll probably retain the trophy, but I, I think she may have to go through board groups to keep it. And that could be an amazing thing to watch. As far as the men's concerned, you know, throw 20 balls in the air and see which one falls. But I'd like to see Connor Scott do well. I think he's got such a passion for the game. He's improved at such a great rate the last couple of years I love watching him play I love his passion I love his creativity with counting as well that makes it really interesting to commentate on but many players could win this and you, you can't just look past Jim McEwen as well who's been sensational in round one and he's already got that win under his belt well, good luck with your picks all the best for the rest of the week in the commentary box and I'm sure we'll speak before then but all the best for Q squad as well next year thank you very much well what a treat this is Alex Moss joined by the legend himself Co Stompy what brings you to Lakeside uh, yeah, just a good laugh and uh, watch the dice, see the new kids on the block and uh, see what comes up. And with yourself, we saw you playing the qualifiers for this tournament, the yeah. World Championship. How was that for you? Uh, I was crap. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's useless. Ah, it wasn't any good. I knew it wouldn't happen because I didn't play in the two years over COVID, you know, you didn't practice, didn't do anything. So the form wasn't there. Because I think you said in an interview on Dutch radio you were stopping playing darts, but you yeah. decided to. Carry no, I on. still play darts. I, I mean, league games locally, a Super League I play, and, uh, and every now and then there's just, just a little competition that comes by and you go, uh, have a go. Because you're still quite big on the, the commentary scene as well, aren't you? Yeah, still Netherlands. every week. Yeah. I've done 11 sessions this, this month, so uh, yeah, still do a lot for television. 
and of course the, the seniors is a thing that we've seen come up I think I was the one that told you that you're in the vote for the uh, the fans vote to play here at Lakeside unfortunately yeah, I made loads of made loads of email accounts yeah. it weren't enough though no, but, um, no. is, is that something that you've maybe got your eye on in the future trying to get into these events yeah my god you know I don't think I'm, I'm doing this, the tour no more, you know, you, you got to travel and all that stuff and I've done that for 30 years and I'm fed up with travelling all the time just to have to play. I just want to go and have fun and see what happens. So if I get an invite, sure, I'll turn up and I'll practice for it and I'll do my best. But uh, I, would, no, I don't think I could do the tour no more. And you said before we started that this is the first time you've been to Lakeside since you played yeah what does it feel like coming back here there must be a, a few it's nothing changed no <laughs> no everything the furniture everything is still the same yeah. so there's nothing changed it's like coming back home again um, it's good memories here loads of good memories but um, it is the home of darts yeah that's for sure it's not Alexandra Palace it's <laughs> absolutely Lakeside but um, yeah well nothing changed so it's, it's like coming back home as you said and you've had a, a few walk-ons here over the time. I think my favourite was the one when you came out to Nickelback. What was your favourite walk-on? Yeah, they had to play uh, Yellow that year. Yeah. Of course, we knew after Lakeside he was going to move uh, to the PDC. And I thought, well, that's appropriate song to, <laughs> to walk on. <laughs> this is how you remind me. And uh, I was smashing 3-0, I believe. <laughs> so that was all right. Well, let's just touch on the, the Dutch players that are here playing. There's a, yeah. a couple in the men's draw. Richard yeah, Reemstra. it's only three, isn't it? Yeah. It's Ryan, not, Ryan not, not many. No. Yeah. Is that a surprise for you? There's not that many play in the tournament? Yeah, because normally the Dutch players are... Yeah, most, well... well <laughs> but plenty of them playing here normally. Mm. Uh, I don't understand why not this year. It's only three, well, still, still three, to be honest. But a uh, yeah, good player, Richard is. Obviously, Ryan can play darts. Sure, we still have to wait and see. Mm. You know, he's still at uh, uh, Germany at the moment, so he'll probably come in tomorrow. And, uh, we'll have to see what he, he does. But I don't know what to expect. And with Richard, he's got a fancy his chances of maybe having a, a deep run. He's done it in the past, he's, he's had some deep runs here. Yeah, but if he misses his first game, and uh, Luke Leder does, he's got a little a problem one. on his head, hasn't he? Yeah. So that's going to be the key match for him, if he wants to have a good run. What about the, the ladies' draw? We saw two of them come through yesterday. We've got two of them that are seeded, Anchor and Eileen. How do you fancy the, the ladies getting on? You, you know, you never know with the ladies. One day they can hit everything, the next day they can hit absolutely nothing. So it, it's all going to be on the form for the week, not for the day, but for the week. So uh, we'll have to wait and see what happens with them. I mean, they're not huge favourites. I mean, you've got Suzuki sitting there, which I think is the, yeah, the big favourite yeah. with the ladies. But still, they're going to have a good run. Co, it's an absolute pleasure to talk to you in person. Really appreciate the time and enjoy your time here at Lakeside. Oh, we will do, definitely, we will do. Dave Paletti, just moments after getting a win on the Lakeside stage for the first time. You've had a little bit of time to let it sink in, but I'm guessing it hasn't quite sunk in yet. No, I don't think it will. I'll take that to my grave, man. It was a. Uh, yeah. I had to dig deep, I did, and the thing is, I, I actually had to play a game. Whereas a few, a few times before, you know, what did someone call me before? I'm like the, um, the Wayne Mardell of the BDO because I clown around on the stage. So it was, um, yeah, I, I think I was focused. I haven't, you know, I'll probably watch it back and see, see how I looked. But yeah, no, I felt, I felt really good, and I mean, I'm gutted for Sean because he's playing really well at the moment, and but you know. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm still in shock, if I'm honest with you. Well, it, was, it was a shame that to be a loser, because both of you served up one of the games of the opening weekend, but it looked like it was going one way after the first set. 3-0 to Sean, popped off a couple of big checkouts, yeah. get the break. How important was it to have that break just to reset and, and come back? Well, I walked to the back and then I was like, you know, because you're not allowed to stay on the stage. So I walked in the back and I was just doing circles in there. I didn't know what to do. I was like, Jesus Christ, and then stanked at it. And he wasn't missing anything. I had one dart a double in the first set. And yeah, I'm, yeah, yeah. So I mean, I, I came back, probably thought, right, just dig deep, man, dig deep. And I dig, I digged, and I digged, and I digged, and won a leg. And I thought, thank God. I, I didn't <laughs> didn't send didn't send like people who come to support me home with nothing, you know. So 
I thought, oh yeah, I won a leg at least, you know, and then, then just you know, another one, then the 106 to win the set. I was like, oh, right, okay, it's game on now, you know, it's best of five legs. Anyone can win that. I could, you know, I could play Van Gogh and beat him in a best of five if I played well. So, yeah. It's like you said to us last night in this first round, you've only got to play well for 10 or 15 minutes, put it all together for two sets. And, and you did for those last two sets, held it together well yeah. at the end there as well. It's, it's my grouping was felt good. And it was, um, yeah, it was, it, they just seemed to be going. And then when he was hitting, he was giving it a bit. And so that was kind of jeering me up, if I'm honest with you. So I was like, right, okay. It's not in a personal way, but you know, you're sort of like, you're thinking, right, I'm in a battle here. And yeah. Yeah, it looked like it was played in, in good spirits. Yeah, yeah, he was. I've got massive, massive respect for him because he's a he's a world master. So it's you know to win to win something like that, it stays with you for life. So I had massive respect for him beforehand. So yeah, but I didn't want to show him that, you know. Which I said to him after. I said, you know, your class, you'll do, you'll do well over the next few years, you know. So yeah. And I know you've been asked about it already. The the no look 180. Was the two treble twenties in there? You just thought, I'm just going to throw this, look away, and, and it's going straight in. You, you felt that confident it was going in. It was, yeah. It was just, you know, like I said in in a in a previous interview, I was like, as a dart player, when you hit two, when you when two go there, you, you, sometimes you know when it's going to go. I would have looked like an idiot if it had missed, but you know, it's it's fine lines, isn't it? You either look like an idiot or you look like a, a not a legend, but you know, an Adrian Lewis wannabe. <laughs> and I remember chatting to you here. Three years ago, a little over three years ago now, you made your Lakeside debut. You then played at the O2. The next couple of years, we've not seen too much of you, but how do you feel now that you've played a game on that stage you've won? Do you feel like Dave, you can make that progression? Pal. Well, um, come back, man. Thank you, sir. Top bollocks. Thank you, mate. Thank you. <laughs> top, top bollocks. That'll thank make, you. That'll make the weekly dance cast. Thank you, Steve. Oh, sorry. Was you... Oh, thank you, Steve. Right? No, 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 you're fine, bro. Good. You're top fine. <laughs> thank you, sir. <laughs> You've got to leave that in. Yep. <laughs> You've got to leave that. that that's got to be your style. <laughs> top bollocks. Top bollocks. <laughs> no, yeah. It's, um, yeah. I can't even remember what the question is. He's thrown me right off now. So you come here 2019, Lakeside made your debut. You then played 2020, the O2. The next couple of years, we've not seen too much of you. But do you feel like you've got this win on the stage? You're now back and you're ready to maybe push forward in darts again? I love darts. I, that's the thing. I love it. It's like, it's like you're... It's like a drug, man. You just want to come back and back and play well. Like, like that is just like for me. I'm nothing big, and you know, to win is massive for me. That I can, you know, for the big players, it's like oh, it's nothing. But for me, that's that's massive. From what I've been through last year, like I never in a million years would have thought like that would have happened. I can only thank God for for giving me the strength man that's that's all I can do is just thank God man he gave me he gave me something there and I was I was begging him please man please just just give me something and he did and that's all I can thank is thank God and while you were doing those interviews Coach Stompy was on the Eurosport broadcast they asked oh. him about your game oh yeah he what is it after the first set he didn't expect you to come back but right. every credit to you I've got to mention though this morning you said if you won, you'd do the crane celebration. You've let us down. I did let you down, but, you know, I'm here again. <laughs> there's, there's plenty of time for that, man. I'll see you Sunday, mate, when I'm lifting that trophy. <laughs> With the crane celebration? With the crane celebration, of course. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Yeah. And if you make the final, you've already said there'll be a change of walk-on as well. <laughs> <laughs> they messed my, my walk-up. Uh, it was meant to be something else, and they, they chose something else. That was for my son. He's he's a, a fortnight head, like I'm sure, like most most kids in this generation. And it was a song, the song that I used. He was he liked it, and then I was like, all oh, right, okay, all right, mate, I'll play that for you. Yeah, no worries, I'll do that. And then I, I changed it, and then and then all of a sudden, it it kicked into that song that I originally said, and I was like, oh, God's sake. <laughs> so I was kind of like, just wanted to get onto the stage so it finished, but yeah, because there was a bit, there's a few swear words in it, and not in a bad way. I think I think the song I had was uh, something to do with the um, Eurovision Song Contest or something like that. So yeah, it was uh, it, that was just for my boy, man. He, he he wanted that, man. My little tiger at home. So he um, he. Uh, he wanted that and the thing is he, he thought I was going to lose he was even even like I spoke to him on the phone and he was like yeah you're probably going to lose but 
can we play FIFA when you come back? And I was like, yeah, 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 yeah no worries, mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks, bud. Yeah, appreciate your time. <laughs> so, yeah, no, it's good. He's going to have to wait a little longer for that game. Oh, damn right, man. I'm sure damn he was right. watching. I'm sure he was proud. And congratulations on the win. I hope so. Thank you. All. I wish you all the best for the next round. You're a diamond. Thank you, sir.